Let's start with the Coinbase API. As I said, this is the simplest example of an API you could use, and I want here to demystify APIs as much as I can. Where to start? For a first step, just open Coinbase API documentation. I already have this on the left side on my screen, and you will find the links for everything in this video somewhere around this video. The point is that as you scroll through, you will see that in fact, this API is created for integrating Coinbase into a business or an application. Most features here will be needed only if you want to interact with Coinbase, like selling or buying Bitcoin automatically. And we won't do that, we will just query the data. And so we can jump to the data endpoint section. It's down here, data endpoints, click it. The simplest thing you can do and we will do in this tutorial is listing all the currencies that are found in Coinbase. For that, you have something called an HTTP request that points you to this data endpoint. The most important thing that you will have to understand here is that this whole process is very similar to a URL that points to a website. And in this specific case, it works exactly the same way. If you paste this link to your browser, without the get, of course, it will automatically download a data file in JSON format to your computer. So I will just do that, copy, paste, and on the right side of my screen, I already have a browser opened. So let me just show you this. So I just put the same URL here. I hit enter and it downloads a file called response.json to my computer. So it's not just similar to a website, but it's practically speaking a website that holds a file that you can download to your computer. Simple as that. Okay, so open this response.json in a text editor. This is Sublime Text, and there is your raw data. Just a quick comment here, some browsers can display JSON files without downloading them on your computer. So there is a chance that for you, this opened already in the browser. So as you can see, this is a JSON format, really similar to a Python dictionary. And you can already work with this data, but of course we won't stop here. I want to bring this to Python. So open a Jupyter notebook, either on your local computer, via Anaconda or preferably on your server. I've already done that and we will download this data, the Coinbase API data into our Jupyter notebook. Quick comment, why do I use Python? It's only because most of these APIs produce JSON files and for a data scientist, Python is the easiest way to unpack the data in these files. You will see that soon. But with that said, feel free to use any other languages you prefer. Okay, so on the left side of my screen, you see the Coinbase documentation. On the right side, we have a Jupyter notebook open. And for this project, we will need to import only two Python libraries. Let's start with that. These are already installed. If you use my server setup or Anaconda, these two libraries are requests and JSON. And let's do that. Import requests. I will zoom in a little bit. Import requests, import JSON, hit enter, or shift enter, sorry, in Jupyter Notebook. It ran. And requests is a simple Python application that can handle HTTP requests, or in other words, it can query data from websites. We will use that for almost all the APIs and even for web scraping, so it's good to know it. And JSON is just the JSON file parser that will help us to work with JSON data. Okay, the next step is that we define the URL we want to use. And this is going to be the URL, copy paste it here. And to bring this to Python format, I will put it between apostrophes and store it into a variable called URL. So this is the same URL or data endpoint that we have seen in the documentation and that we have pasted in our browser. 
to download the JSON file that I have just shown you. And then the rest of the process is sort of a standard formula. The next step is that we run this requests.get function. This line sends the HTTP request and it uses the URL variable that we have defined on the previous line, of course, and we will store this into a variable called response. Cool. And then we process this response data with the JSON library, JSON loads, that's the function. And we refer to the variable in the previous line response and we get the text out of it. And we store this whole thing into a variable called currencies because we want to download the currencies data. And then let's see our freshly downloaded and parsed data that we stored in the currencies variable. Currencies. Nice. This is the data that we have downloaded. And it's the same JSON data that we have downloaded before to our computer. Now it's in our Jupyter notebook, ready to process it with Python. Now again, let me emphasize that this is a pretty standard process. So when you run different parts of the Coinbase API, you will have to change only the URL, but we will get back to that soon. The other thing that I want to show you that this is of course a Python dictionary and you can get the data points from it by using standard Python list and dictionary syntaxes. And I will show that in a second. But before that, I want to query something more exciting than just a list of currencies. So let's get back to the documentation and just scroll further. And the next few sections are about exchange rates. Here you will find buy prices and sell prices and everything else. Buy and sell prices are different, by the way, because Coinbase makes profit on the difference between buying and selling prices. But what we need right now is a mid-range price, which is here in the exchange rates section. And so to get the actual Bitcoin price, for instance, we will need this URL. I will copy paste this and in my Jupyter notebook, in a new field, I will copy my previous syntax with the request and everything. I will copy all these into one field. Cool. And I will replace the URL with the exchange rates URL like this. I will also change this variable name for clarity. Uh, let's call this x underscore rates, then x underscore rates, hit enter. And there you go. This is not exactly, I scroll down a bit. So this is not exactly the Bitcoin price right now, but it's live data and this actually shows how much one United States dollar is worth right now in different currencies. But if you go back to the documentation for a second, you will see that you can get the same data for Bitcoin as well. It's a bit hidden on my screen, but hopefully not on your screen. So if you check out this example request, you can actually see that you can add parameters to the end of your URL. And you can change the default currency by adding this question mark currency equals BTC. I will copy paste and add that here. I zoom out a little bit on this window. Okay, so this changes the default currency to Bitcoin instead of United States dollars. And let me run this. Nice, here are the Bitcoin prices in all different currencies. One of the most well-known is USD, of course, which seems to be the current price when I record this video. And you know, you can change this default currency to anything else you prefer. It can be euros and there are the euros exchange rates or to Ethereum. 
And here must be somewhere the price of Ethereum right now. There it is. So that's it. We have the data. I will change this back to Bitcoin. So we have the Bitcoin prices in different other currencies. We are not done, however. As I said, we can unpack the individual data points from this Python dictionary with the standard Python syntax, and we will do that. So let's break down this x underscore rates variable. And this needs some basic Python knowledge, but for instance, this whole currency data is in a dictionary called data. See? And the exchange rates themselves are in a dictionary called rates. And the keys for the actual currency values are the currency names, of course. So, for example, if I want to query only USD, I would do this. And this is the price of one Bitcoin in USD right now when I record this video. Of course, this will be different for you when you query in real time, but this is how it's done. I can query like Hungarian foreigns. Uh, Bitcoin prices or Euro Bitcoin prices and everything else. Pretty cool. So you can play around with all other currencies. But in a nutshell, this is how you can get access to cryptocurrency data via the Coinbase API. I will copy paste this here. And every time I run this run, it will show, I will turn this back to USD it will show the actual price of Bitcoin in the United States dollars. In another video at the end of this module, I will also show you how you can automate this process. And for instance, how you can query and save this data in every five minutes. It will be important because this one data point is just a momentary value, right? And to build trend charts or more meaningful data projects, you will need to collect data for a longer period of time. Speaking of which, in this video, I want to show you one last thing, how to query historical data. And this, of course, really depends on the given API. In many cases, it is not even available. But in the case of the Coinbase API, luckily, there is an option to do this. It's under the spot price section, get spot price section. And the spot price is sort of a mid-market price as well. So it's similar to what we had so far. It works with this URL. So I will just go ahead and copy paste this into a new cell. I will replace the URL with the spot price URL. And there is an unusual part here, which is this colon currency pair part. And usually, if you see something like this in URLs of an API documentation, know that the colon character refers to a variable that you will have to change. I will get back to this in another lecture, but in this specific case, if you take a look at the example they show here, it says that it needs a currency pair, something like BTC USD, in this specific format. So I will just copy paste this here and I will go with this and let's run this again. Um, I will change variable names because this won't work, of course. So spot price and spot price. And nice, this is still the current Bitcoin USD exchange rate. And as you can see, it changed in the last five minutes. So this is really real-time data. But the point is that if you go back to the documentation, you will see that this URL, in fact, accepts a date parameter as well. Unfortunately, the documentation doesn't provide more info about it or an example, but based on what we have learned so far, we can figure it out. Or you know what, I will just show it to you. Uh, point is, you will have to add a question mark at the end of the URL and you can set the date with this syntax, date equals, and then you define a date, let's say 2021, January the 1st, so the first day of this year, and there is the Bitcoin price on that day. 
If you want to get all that, of course, you can always write a for loop for it. I won't do that here, but I trust that you can do it for yourself. Again, that's basic Python. And I could go on and on with this, but instead of that, I will just wrap up this video and I will leave the rest of the discovery for the Coinbase API to you. I showed you everything I wanted. And again, the goal with this video was to demystify APIs. As you can see, really, it took only a few lines of code, these four plus uh, the, the two import lines, really just a few lines of code. And of course, the right URL copy pasted from the documentation and some basic Python knowledge. But at the end, with these few lines of Python code, we queried real life raw data from the Coinbase API. So this was the simplest example. Other APIs can get a bit more complex, so move on. And in the next lectures, we will cover authentication issues and the case where you will have to install an additional Python library to get the data. Oh, and of course, you will find the Jupyter notebook that I showed you here in a nicer, simpler format with a bit more examples somewhere around this video. So feel free to download that and use that when you discover the Coinbase API further.